What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is an old school gear tour type video. Now, I know on the channel, I don't talk a lot about gear, nor am I really a gear head. I don't buy a lot of pedals, nor guitars, amps. I don't really buy a lot of gear in general. But today's video, I thought I would share with you guys the stuff that I use on a daily basis, my guitars, the pedals that I use on a daily basis, and my amps. So let's go. So before we dive into any of the specifics for this video, let me share with you guys my idea theory about gear. Like I mentioned before, I am not a gearhead at all. I rarely search Sweetwater, rarely search Reverb or eBay or whatever to find a pedal or a guitar or an amp or really anything. I'm usually a one to two pedal purchase per year at most type of guy. And I've only really bought one guitar in the past five years. I am very much of the mentality have less gear, but know it to the best of its abilities, right? Even though I have six guitars, I know what they can all do and what they have their strengths and their weaknesses, right? I have a lot of pedals, but that was in the beginning of my guitar journey. The reality is like you'll see, what's on my pedal board really is what gets used every single day, right? Same with my amps. I have a couple amps that I use every single day. Um, same with cables. I have two cables. I have a couple cables, obviously, because I need backups. But I am very strict on what kind of cable I like because, yeah, we'll get into that later. So with all that being said, let's dive into today's video. First up, guitars. So first up in the guitars my Les Paul. Specifically, it's a 2012 Gibson Custom Shop 59 reissue Murphy Aged. I got this guitar when I graduated high school and it was the guitar that really did everything for me uh, during Berkeley years and currently now in LA with the videos and everything. Um, some quick specs, I changed the pickups November 2019 to Seymour Duncan, Joe Bonamassa, Magellan pickups, and they sound really great. Uh, and then one day going to rehearsal at Berkeley, the guitar slipped out of my gig bag and the neck broke slightly. So it has had a headstock repair, just like every other Gibson has. Um, but other than that, it's all stock. I use 11 to 52 gauge strings top wrapped on most of my guitars, except for one, which I'll tell you about later. But this is a guitar, my number one, that I know like the back of my hand. And for that reason, it'll always be my number one. Next up, let's check out the ES-335. So here is my Gibson 335. It's a 2013 63 reissue 335 from the Memphis Custom Shop. I think it was the 50th anniversary of these guitars. Very, very Eric Clapton, Crossroads, Albert Hall spec. This guitar is amazing. Does blues and jazz really, really well. I used this guitar for my one of my final transcriptions at Berkeley, which was transcribing the solo West Montgomery 4 on 6, which to this day I think is the hardest solo I've transcribed and I use this guitar on the neck pickup for that performance and the professor really liked it. <laughs> so quick story behind this guitar. At Berkeley, there's a professor, Kurt Shoemate, who does jazz blues incredibly well. He introduced me to Kenny Burrell, which I think is my favorite jazz blues guitar player. And studying with him, he has a cherry red 335 just like this no blocks he put grovers on and he was the one that got me into the 335s again all stock if it ain't broke don't fix it is my mentality no need to change pickups or pots or tuners or really anything the guitar again is strung up with ernie ball 11 to 52 gauge strings and yeah this is my 335. 
let's check out the PRSs next. So first up in the PRS world is we'll start with the heavy hitter. This is the 2016 John Mayer private stock Super Eagle that Paul Reed Smith made for him for joining Dead & Company. He had an iteration of this one in 2015, but not until spring break-ish March 2016 did PRS announce this limited edition guitar, one of a hundred in the world, Brazilian Rosewood, 50A15 JM pickups, it has coil splits for each individual pickup, EQ and treble boost as well switch, incredible flame. Uh, I'll link below a video about this guitar called PRS John Mayer Super Eagle, something like that on my channel. But this guitar is a dream to play. It was quite a long journey in getting it because call the dealer and hope they have one and then wait. I think I waited about five months for it to arrive. And playing it every single day still brings me an excitement like no other guitar that I can't believe I own this. John played one up until 2018 with Dead & Co. Um... But yeah, this guitar is a dream to play. Put it through a Fender amp or a great clean channel with some light overdrive. And it's just a great guitar. Obviously, it nails those Grateful Dead type tones. But all that set aside, killer neck pickup, incredible middle pickup. I think it's my favorite pickup on this guitar. And the bridge pickup is equally as incredible. But this middle pickup is, is amazing. This guitar is strung up with... 11 to 48 uh, works great. All stock, obviously. I did put a DiMarzio strap. Not sure if you can see that. For the sole reason I was bored. <laughs> um, Ernie Ball straps are way superior than this D DiMarzio one. Um, but it looks cool. So, hey. Next up, let's check out the Silver Sky. So, here is the John Mayer PRS Silver Sky in the Golden Mesa colorway. This guitar I've had since the beginning of lockdown, ironically, and it suits my Strat S-Type needs totally. At the time, I was really, really looking for a Strat. I'm not really a Fender Strat type of guy. Um, I'm more of a Les Paul person, as you guys know, but I was itching for one really badly. Specifically for like the middle position and the middle bridge position. So the Silver Sky got my attention, obviously because I'm a huge John Mayer fan, but mostly because they were so consistent with the ones that I played. Strats, I think, are like Les Paul's. It's a bit of a journey till you find the right one. And quite honestly, I didn't want to do that journey. <laughs> so the Silver Sky didn't matter where I played it, whether at Guitar Center or Sam Ash or at NAM, the previous name in January, they all felt and had the same vibe to them. So that confidence really sunk into me and said that doesn't matter what color Silver Sky I get, there may be a slight difference in maybe the neck flame or whatever, the weight, but they'll all play and sound very, very similar. So there was really no journey. It was just finding the best color <laughs> and Golden Mesa was the winner. Also, before we move on, this guitar is all stock, obviously, and it is strung with, again, Ernie Ball 11 to 52 gauge strings. I went from 10s to 10 and a halves Ten and a halfs were really, really good. But after a while, like hours playing them daily, they felt really light, which I didn't like. Then I went to 11 to 48. The same thing happened. And then it came to a point where my Gibsons and the Telecaster had 11 to 52 gauge strings on them. So I said, who cares? We're putting 11 to 52 on the Silver Sky and it plays and sounds like a dream. Next up, let's check out the Telecaster. So last and certainly not least of my electrics is my K-Line Truxton T-Style guitar in butterscotch. 
this guitar is amazing. This is the last guitar I bought. I bought it for my birthday this past year in February, and it's incredible. It took me about six months, maybe, to find the right Telecaster. I think I played 18 over those six months across different stores in L.A., and this guitar I got from L.A. Vintage, and it has suit every one of my Telecaster needs. I'm a huge Robin Ford fan, and I much prefer, honestly, the sound of Rosewood as opposed to Maple, but I wanted the classic Telecaster. I'm not going to buy a Telecaster and have another Rosewood fretboard when all my guitars already have Rosewood fretboards. So I played two or three K-Lines at LA Vintage, and this one obviously struck a chord because it's now mine. <laughs> all original. I did change the bridge to a more Fender-style bridge. Uh, pickups are original. Pots are original. This guitar, like most of my guitars, <laughs> is strung up with Ernie Ball 11 to 52 gauge strings. I say that in all the guitars, but I'm not endorsed by Ernie Ball. I wish I was. And I buy like 11 packs of string at a time. So endorse me, Ernie Ball. <laughs> Let's move on to my acoustic guitar. So last up is my only acoustic guitar that I have, and that is my Martin OM JM. I think from 2011 or 2012. This is a guitar I love. It was really the only acoustic on my radar at the time because I was obsessed with John Mayer at the time. I still kind of am. Um, but it suits whatever acoustic guitar needs I have. And for that, it'll probably be my only acoustic guitar that I own until I really need another one. So that's guitars. Let's check out some amps now. So amps. I think I'm more of an amplifier guy than a guitar guy, personally. And like everything else here, less is more. Yes, I have here five amps, but the reality is I only use two. My Hot Rod Deluxe and my Wellagen Overdrive Special. Those two amps get used every single day, whether for Zoom or for making videos for YouTube. Again, the mindset of using less, but knowing the most that they can do to the best of their abilities. So with that being said, let's do a quick focus on these two amps. So let's start off the amps with the bang, the holy grail of amps, my Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. I've had this amp for, I think, almost 10 years now. It's the amp that I practice through every single day before getting into Berkeley, the amp I used every single day at Berkeley, the amp I use for everything I need to, the amp I use every single day for YouTube videos, Zoom, you name it, the amp does. Again, this is an amp that is very affordable, but I've had it for so long, I know what it can and can't do has an incredible clean platform, but the overdrive section is pretty bad, like we all know. But in return, it takes pedals incredibly well and has the very classic Fender reverb sound. And I'm very much of the philosophy that, again, if you can't sound like yourself or get a good tone through Hot Rod Deluxe, you won't sound like yourself or get a good tone through any other amp. I know the Hard the Less gets a lot of crap because it's so cheap and there's other amps that sound better. And I agree. But for what it does at its price point, I think the Hot Rod Deluxe is one of the best amps in the world. You can rule the world with this amp and it's just probably one of my current modern day Fender amps. So that is the Hot Rod Deluxe. So next up is the real Holy Grail amp, for real. It's my Wellagen Overdrive Special amp. I purchased this amp in the summer of 2017 and it got delivered February 2018. So about six months or so. And this amp was, is my dream amp. Great clean tone and that very classic Dumble Overdrive type sound, but not really aiming for anybody's particular sound, more how I wanted it to be. 
the amp is all custom voice to my liking. Um, Jelly Wellagen is a genius when it comes to these amps. It came in a combo format with a EV 1x12 speaker. EV didn't suit me the best. So during the lockdown, I installed this Celestion Redback 150 watt speaker in the combo. And then a couple months ago, I ordered a head enclosure just for more portability sake. And that's what you see now, the ODS in a head enclosure, black suede. And this amp is a dream. It incredible clean tone, incredible overdrive section. And every guitar that I run through it sounds like itself, which is, I think, the best part. So those are my amps. Yes, I do have five amps, but those two, the Hot Rod Deluxe and the Wellagen Overdrive Special, if you were to take away every other amp, those two amps stay no matter what. I know everything they can and can do. I know them like the back of my hand. And again, I believe that's more important than having excess gear that you don't use. Very much of the uh, five watt world mentality around here. The most music with the least gear. So those are my amps. Let's check out pedals now. So regarding pedals, um, <laughs> this is where Joe Bonamassa got in trouble. They're great. But I am much more of the mindset that you can really just plug into the amp and get your sound through there, right? I do have a pedal board with a couple pedals, but those are stuff that I use every single day, especially with Zoom and what works best when making these videos. So the pedal board. I have made a video about it, link below. It's pretty basic. Tuner, trem, overdrive, chorus, delay, and reverb. Really one of every food group. Um, the main reason I plug into the pedal board every single day is only for two reasons, actually. The tuner and the Strymon timeline. Because the timeline gives me the ability to, do, to use the looper. And that comes very handy when doing Zoom stuff. But the reality is every single day I just plug straight in and run into the ODS or Fender and just use the tuner. Pedals are cool, but the more distracted or more into pedals you are, I think, and for me personally, again, it's more way trying to perfect your craft on the instrument, which is my ultimate goal, is be a master of my craft on the guitar, whether it's teaching or Grateful Dead music or whatever. Be the best that I can, and the more I focus on pedals or what's on John Mayer's board, I have to have it. You don't have to have it. You want it, but you don't need to have it. What I need or what I want is to improve on the instrument, improve on teaching. How can I explain things more? Pedals do enhance sound, but they're also a big distraction that currently I'm not really in for. I like what I like, it's on my pedal board, it gets the job done, and right now that's perfect. I don't need pedals that can do MIDI, that can do amp sims, or anything like that. Not for me. Guitar, cable, amp suits my needs 100% of the time, basically. Side note, some fun pedals <laughs> that I do really like are stuff like the Electroharmonix Qtron. Because that's really a sound you can't get through anything else. So like Shakedown Street or Fire in the Mountain or like whatever auto wall you need. I think the Qtron does one of the best current jobs. Another pedal that I really enjoy these days is the Love Pedal Chula. This was my, I think, second or third pedal purchase this year. Heavy year pedal purchasing. <laughs> I got it on a trip to Virginia because I never played on before. And it's loud because it's Josh Smith's pedal, obviously loud. Uh, but I'm not sure what it's supposed to sound like, but it, it's a great always on pedal. It's really, really cool. It works great with um, my Telecaster and my Les Paul. Uh, I won't do a video about it because I'm not really a gear channel, but you may hear it. And if 
when you do, I'll let you know it's on. Uh, has a secondary overdrive as well that's a boost on top of the always on part. And it sounds really, really good. So that is pedals. Next up, the small details, cables and strings and picks. So now some of the fine detail stuff. Strings, like mentioned before throughout the guitar part, I prefer Ernie Ball 11 to 52 gauge strings. Again, not endorsed by Ernie Ball. I wish I was, that'd be awesome. But for what I do, those strings suit my needs. Picks, I very much enjoy the Dunlop Flow Blue, the one millimeter. I used to play the regular triangle ones, but those felt a little bit too big. So the Flow, I guess, shrinks the size a hair and adds a point to the end of the pick. These picks are my favorite. Over lockdown, I did fall into the John Mayer hype, like we all do. And I did order a blue chip TD40, which equates to about one millimeters. Um, haven't used it much. Works great with acoustics for sure, but in electric, it's too bright for what I like. So I always go back to Dunlop Flow one millimeter blue. Next up, uh, cables. Cables. Again, very personal, but my only critique with cables is I wish people would introduce Neutrik silent plugs more, the red plugs, not the black ones, the red ones. So you lose me, certain cable brands, if they charge like $200 for 15 feet and I don't get a Neutrik silent plug that costs $5 because... The cable can be $200 or $1,000. The moment I unplug that guitar, brrr, noise comes through. Only way to cure that is Neutrik Stylin plugs, the red ones. So with that being said, the cable that I use the most is Mogami. I think it's 2524, the gold one. And on the guitar side, I use the Neutrik Stylin plug. This cable is great in general, but with the Stylin plug, it's even better. Mogami do offer this cable in the premium version that's like $150 with this already on. But if you get gold, buy this for $5, you can just do it yourself by soldering. So that's the cables that I use. And on the pedal boards, um, I'm always with the uh, always sol solder. Solder, solder, how does it go? Mentality, just because that eliminates any failure. Let's say it that way. Um, so that's the nitty and gritty small details, cables, picks, and strings. Well, all right then. That's today's video. The Gabriel Bergman Gear Tour, maybe we call it. <laughs> um, I'm very, very lucky and grateful to have such great gear that I've been able to purchase over the past 10 years or so. And I have bought and sold a lot of gear over the past, but this is stuff that I think helps me do my job the best, helps me sound the best, and makes me the happiest and excited to play. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, please press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.